and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my little book corner. I hope to bring you guys a lot more content from this space this year. I definitely want to delve more into children's literature and giving you guys rundowns on my favorite children's books, children's books reviews, children's book reviews, <laughs> library hauls, and all of those sorts of things. I also want to bring you some of the favorites that I read this year. I'm aiming to read 20 books this year, which is a lot more than I've read even in the last five years, I will admit, but I'm hoping to do a fiction, nonfiction, fiction, nonfiction pattern, and I already reviewed my first book of the year, which was nonfiction by Jennifer L. Scott called um, At Home with Madame Chic. <laughs> Sorry, mom brain. Um, so you can go and ahead and check that out. And I recently finished my first fiction of the year, which is Karen Walker's The Dreamers. So I'm hoping to kind of give you guys more of like quick five minute reviews for some of the adult books. Of course, if there's a longer conversation that I wanna have, the video will be longer, but I think especially maybe for the fiction books, they'll probably be a little bit shorter because a lot of times with fiction, there's maybe not as many practical takeaways or things to discuss, more of just feelings that you had or general thoughts on the book. So today's little five minute review experience experiment is going to be with Karen Thompson Walker, sorry, Karen Thompson Walker's The Dreamers. Now I was introduced to Karen Thompson Walker when best friends of mine, Loie and Joel, gave me this book, which is her first, I believe it's her debut novel, which is The Age of Miracles. Highly recommend this book. It's incredible. Um, I'll go ahead and just kind of let you guys know um, a bit of the background on this, which is on a seemingly ordinary Saturday in a California suburb, Julia and her family awake to discover, along with the rest of the world, that the rotation of the earth has suddenly begun to slow. So basically, um, both of these books center around sort of cataclysmic events, and it follows different people in that town or in that space and how they're experiencing said event. And uh, both books are set in Southern California, as I live in Los Angeles, I can totally relate. And some of the hero characters are young women. Again, love that. I wouldn't necessarily catalog these as YA books, but they definitely could be writ written for and written read by a YA audience for sure. So highly recommend Karen Thompson Walker. She is definitely one of my favorite authors. To my best knowledge, these are her only two books, um, but today I'm gonna be talking about The Dreamers. Now The Dreamers was gifted to me by my brother for Christmas 2019, okay? And I didn't read it until now, and I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that I loved Age of Miracles and I probably love this. I'm just gonna go ahead, 2019, and give you the synopsis of this book. One night in an isolated college town in the hills of Southern California, a first year student stumbles into her room, falls asleep, and doesn't wake up. She sleeps through the morning into the evening. Her roommate, Mai, is unable to rouse her. Neither can the paramedics nor the perplexed, doc perplexed doctors at the hospital. When a second girl falls asleep, and then a third, Mai finds herself thrust together with an eccentric classmate as panic takes hold of the college and spreads to the town. Those affected by the illness, are displaying unusual levels of brain activity higher than has ever been recorded before. They are dreaming heightened dreams, but of what? So essentially what this book is about is a pandemic that starts in a Southern Californian college town that I believe is kind of meant to be modeled after Lake Arrowhead, which doesn't have a college, but is essentially the physical space of this book. Now, Karen Thompson Walker, who I would love to interview someday, wrote a book about a pandemic spreading in a town in 2019 and i will say a bit of a trigger warning for this book if you really struggled through the pandemic which i'm sure many of has or if you became a mother in a pandemic as i did this book was incredibly beautiful but very difficult to read at times it goes into a lot of detail about the pandemic which is this sleep kind of uh, illness spreading through the town the use of masks the lack of hospital room space ventilators intubators children being affected, babies being affected, the fear in parents of, can I go to the grocery store or not, is it safe? So a lot of those events that we all lived through are told in detail in this book, and it's just awe-inspiring to me that she wrote it before the pandemic we all are currently living through. Um, obviously there were pandemics before this one, but just hauntingly crazy how that happened. Um, I would love to kind of research. If I do find some interesting interviews or articles on that, maybe Karen Thompson Walker being asked, hey, you wrote this right before the pandemic, like how do you feel about it now? I will link those below. 
Um, but I loved this book. I will say, I'm not sure I loved it quite as much as I loved The Age of Miracles. The Age of Miracles, again, centers around Julia, the young high school girl, a little bit more. You follow her story. It's been a few years since I read it, but I like highlighted, of course, you're not gonna say anything, but there was a lot of things highlighted and underlined um, just about her coming of age, um, falling in love, just discovering the world amidst something happening that is very crazy. Um, she's a bit socially awkward. Um, I, I just related to her family, so many things. But both of them talk about a lot of relational things and the spirit of man and the spirit of humanity. Like in the Age of Miracles, she says on page 136, a rush of tears blurred my view. Here were strangers speeding to a stranger's aid. And they mentioned the character Mai in this book, her and her eccentric friend, Matthew, um, decide that they have, since they haven't caught the virus yet and they can't leave the town, they just are gonna help whoever they can. And so they're literally rescuing sleeping bodies from houses, dragging them to the school where they have to start intubating and ventilating ventilating people because the hospitals run out of room. Nurses are being affected. They save an older professor from his house who falls asleep when his house begins to flood. Like there's so many, there's so many things happening. Um, I'm gonna put here a little bit of a spoiler alert um, here. If you wanna read the book to not read too much further because I'm gonna share two, maybe it's two of my favorite quotes from the book that do tell a little bit about what happens. Um, so Mai and her friend Matthew, there's a nurse, again there's a young parents with a young baby girl. Those chapters in particular were hard for me to read, but I will say, I think there's almost like 57 chapters in this. So if you're the type of person that likes to jump from character to character with quick, speedy chapters, this book is definitely one for you. It's a very quick read and I'm a slow reader. Um, but one of the characters you also follow are um, Libby and her sister Sarah, who are about 11 and 12 years old, whose father falls prone to the pandemic and is taken away. Um, I'm just trying not to say the C word or virus too much in this video because I don't know if it'll get flagged weird. Um, but the two of them are basically on their own in their house and um, they're taking care of foster kittens. And on page 159 um, it says, um, they've been a good distraction, the cats, the four kittens skating across the wood floors, the two older ones always howling for food. One of the babies keeps throwing up on the rug, another one pees on the stairs, but it feels good to take care of them the way it's possible to disappear inside someone else's needs. And I just thought that was such a beautiful and poignant description of motherhood, especially becoming a mother in a pandemic when the outside world is changing so fast, when you don't know what's safe, when you don't know what's gonna happen next, when all the things you anticipated, friends coming over, family visiting, travel, going and taking your baby places can't happen, you find yourself disappearing inside of their need. Now I think regardless of a pandemic, a mother disappears inside of the needs of her child often for better or for worse and I don't know I just felt very seen by that by that prose that she wrote um, and I think it's just another great aspect of this book that a lot of these characters dis disappear inside the needs of others and it's very beautiful to witness in the book um, another section um, again, this is the father talking about the baby after his wife has fallen asleep and he's very afraid it's gonna happen to the baby. Um, she is two weeks older than the last time Ben saw her. Just the continued fact of her body, just her existence is proof of the work of other people. Those nurses now swishing through the room in protective suits. His, his baby falls asleep after he does. Those nurses now swishing through the room in protective suits, how they have cared for her every day since he last saw her and the college student they will never meet who rescued her from the fire. She could have died. This is the knowledge that lights every moment with her now. The things that could have happened but did not are just as crucial to a life as all the things that do. And since becoming a mother, I can relate to this so much. The fear that you have with your child. Our daughter was in the NICU after she was born. She was born in the middle of 2020. The things that could have happened but didn't happen to her and haven't happened to her light so much of her life just as much as the things that do. And I think a lot of parents can relate. Again, just beautiful, beautiful, brilliant prose to, to, to kind of put feelings to that. And then lastly, she's kind of encapsulating a lot of the different dream experiences that a lot of these um, characters experience. And um, she says on page 297, some of the children dreamed exquisitely beautiful worlds, the shadows of which will appear in their drawings for years, and what the infants dreamed of we will never know. 
but perhaps those visions will live secretly in their habits and in their desires, their sense of what is familiar and what should be feared. And since I have a toddler whose dreams and thoughts I don't fully understand, I don't know, I just loved this idea that her dreams and her inner workings, even though I don't know them, will travel through her via her dreams and her desires, her drawings, maybe what she writes, the decisions she makes, her just very sense of the world around her for years to come. And I just thought, wow, that's crazy. It's out of my control. Something I have to definitely trust God with, but I just loved the acknowledgement of that, that we don't know what's going on in anyone's mind, especially our children, but that these exquisitely beautiful worlds or even shadows they carry with them, I think I can relate to that too. There are things that I dreamt of that I still dream, as, dream of as a kid, and I think so much from our childhood, memories that we have, the spaces we inhabit affect just the way we view everything in the world, um, for sure. Um, and just, it kind of ends on this beautiful just realization that this baby girl will grow up and um, so much of life will remain always beyond her understanding as obscure as the landscapes of someone else's dream. Just this acknowledgement that we can't know everything, that we won't know everything. Um, the doctors couldn't know everything in the pandemic, they still don't. Um, everyone's different experiences of it. I think even this week as we were struggling with some health issues and tummy troubles for our little one, there's just so much we don't know and don't understand and don't know the reasons for that we just have to trust that God's in control. Um, but I just loved it even for the dreams. You know, we only know the world that we have taken in and the world that we've imagined. And someone else has whole universes in their brain as well. And so I recommend the dreamers again, just a little bit of a trigger warning for some of that pandemic slash parenthood content. Um, but I highly recommend both of these books as amazing fiction reads, young adult reads, especially if you like stories set in Southern California or you live in Southern California, definitely check out Karen Thompson Walker. Now I believe this is the um, hardback that you can still buy online. My brother found this one special ordered from a bookstore I believe in the UK because this is a UK version from Scribner's UK. So I'm not sure you can get this cover design other places, but he thought I would love it with the rose gold leaves. So super special, just wanted to clarify that the cover might look different if you buy it in the US. So both of these books, books, incredibly beautiful poetry and prose. I love the way she writes, even if sometimes the subject matter is a bit hard. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more lighthearted, not even lighthearted, I would just say a little bit lighter, a little bit more focused on the coming of age, Age of Miracles, if you want something that will maybe help you process the pandemic or process some of these deep emotional things in motherhood and honestly just in life and relationships in general, especially surrounding the pandemic, definitely check out The Dreamers. So hope this video was helpful. So much for a five minute review. It's more like a 10 minute review. Maybe I'll call these 10 minute reviews. Um, but yeah, um, I love you guys. I'm so grateful that you're here. I hope you're enjoying the new book content on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Send this video to your friends and family if you think you would enjoy it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.